This episode will most likely be shocking to many of you as it contains information and facts that most of you will hear for the first time. And you'll see one of the most heinous crimes against human rights in history and the hero of this crime is France. Fifteen thirty four was the year of the beginning of the French colonial campaigns, which continued until the year nineteen eighty and ended with the seizure of seventy three separate countries. In Africa, the Americas, the islands of the Indian Ocean, the Middle East, Asia, and all the way to Antarctica. And more than 120 million indigenous people were killed in these countries, according to what was mentioned in the Massacre Coloniaux or Colonial Massacres book. As everyone knows, these colonial campaigns weren't always for the sake of killing and enslavement only, but were for other, more evil and brutal reasons. The most important of which was that France believed in the supremacy of the white race over the rest of all human races. And to be fair, not only France, but many European thinkers believed in that as well. How did World War II begin? This was due to Hitler's belief that the Aryan race is superior to all other races. They believed and still believe that the white man is the master of the universe, while the rest were created to be their slaves and servants. The French colonial campaign was like an insatiable glutton. France was always looking for precious natural resources that are abundant in those countries especially Africa, which they used to call the virgin continent because none of the modern countries had ever extracted the minerals contained in that land, such as iron, gold, silver, diamonds, oil, uranium, and all minerals that can be stolen from their owners. It didn't matter whether these minerals are expensive or cheap, the important thing for them was to loot and send them to France for the French to enjoy and build dams, roads, hospitals and towers like the Eiffel Tower. However, in order for the French people to enjoy more of the great work that their sons were doing outside the homeland, they built a giant park in the center of the capital, Paris. This park was called the Human Zoo or Colonial Exhibition and it's considered one of the worst and despicable racist crimes committed by the French in their full of massacres history. Before you continue watching the video, we must point out that many of the images and clips are harsh and those who have weak hearts won't be able to bear it. The main aim of these parks was to be exactly like a circus, for the sake of entertaining the French by showing the ways of living of the primitive barbarians, just as they called them, and with showing replica models of their life in the same form as they were in their original homeland including the architecture of houses, ways of dress, agriculture and folklore. And in order to increase the level of enjoyment even more, they brought in real people kidnapped from every tribe in Africa. They brought children, men and women forced with chains around their necks and legs. And they put them in iron cages with monkeys and animals and forced them to do humiliating and inhuman acts such as the appearance of women and children naked without any clothes and forcing them to eat the meat of dogs and rats in front of visitors. And all this in order to dazzle the audience and make them laugh and enjoy their time and the scenes that they see in front of them. And also to promote the idea that they're just wild animals that have nothing to do with civilized man. The beginning was in 1906 when the French state built the first imitation of a village from the Congo in the city of Marseille. The French state filled these villages or similar villages with several Congolese prisoners. And when the green light was given to the visitors to enter, they were surprised that the idea was well received by the people. This exhibition began to receive more than 40,000 visitors per day, according to what was mentioned in the book The Haunting Human Zoo of Paris. Can you imagine that? 40,000 people came to this exhibition every day to see people in form of animals or to deal with them on the basis that they're animals. 
The visitors were from all age groups, children, teenagers, elderly, women and men. They all enjoyed watching the Congolese Africans being tortured in cages like monkeys. If this huge number of visitors indicates something, that it indicates the amount of racism spread in French society at the time, and European in general. After the huge amounts of money earned by the founders of this human zoo, they decided to expand the idea and create a giant park with a huge area that can receive the largest number of African prisoners. So the idea was to build the giant Vincennes Park in the capital Paris, which by the way, is still there today. After the success of this park, the rest of the European countries also admired this infernal idea, which was generating a lot of money for its owners. King Leopold II of Belgium, who's called the Handcutter King, and he's the butcher who killed more than 10 million people in Congo. He ordered in 1908 the establishment of a human zoo in the capital Brussels, and the transfer of hundreds of Congolese from their original homelands to Belgium, with the aim of presenting them to the Belgian people. In its first year, this park succeeded in receiving more than 1.3 million Belgian visitors, all of whom came to enjoy watching the savage primitive man as promoted by the colonial authorities. And the strange thing about this matter is that at the beginning of the 20th century, many supporters of the evolution theory from the atheistic elite and many anthropologists admired and were amazed by these human zoos. And they used them as strong and decisive evidence in promoting the idea of the supremacy of the white race over the rest of the races. And they also used them as tangible means to confirm the evolution theory and to insert it into the brains of the general of people. And in 1904, the American inventor James William McKee promoted his theory which claims that the white man is at the top of the evolutionary pyramid, while the black man is at the bottom of the pyramid and he needs millions of years to reach his white masters at the top of the pyramid. Imagine that they used to believe in these ideas at the beginning of the 20th century and they still believe in the same ideas now in 2023. As a result of these humiliating crimes that took place inside the human parks in France and Belgium, people and the general of people got a firm and an unquestionable conviction of the superiority of the white race over the rest of the other races. For this reason, they have absolutely no problem with exterminating the rest of the other races in order to control and establish absolute sovereignty over the land. And so, these ideas help the colonial authorities to get more support for their terrorist campaigns against weak countries and their colonies and the annihilation of their people. The strange thing is that this arrogance and this inferior view of the rest of the human races is still centered in minds of many French people, and not only the French, but many of European people, and they've never abandoned it, and they will certainly not do so. An example of this is what happened in the final match of the World Cup that was held in Qatar last year, which was between France and Argentina. The match ended with Argentina winning and France losing. Most of the French national team are Africans and what happened after the loss is that many French players of African descent were subjected to bullying, ridicule and racism. The French went to their Instagram accounts and commented on their photos using banana and monkey emojis. And they posted comments like, go back to the jungle, your place is in the zoo, you're just monkeys, not players. The players who were most exposed to this disgusting racist campaign were Kingsley Coman, Aurelian Chouamini, and Randall Kolomwani. In the end, the poor had to turn off the comments and messages feature in their Instagram accounts. But it's not only the French who love racism, Denmark also had a piece of this pie. Host Søren Lipot in News & Co program on the Danish TV2 news channel likened the Moroccan players and their families to monkeys. Imagine, the host likened them during their joy and celebration of winning to monkeys as he was holding a picture of a family of monkeys and likened them to Moroccan players. Yes, this is what happens in countries that support and sanctify human rights. Don't be shocked or surprised as this is the reality away from media and social media. 
This incident came out after Morocco beat Canada, Belgium, Spain and Portugal in the World Cup in Qatar. They couldn't comprehend and didn't like the idea that an African Muslim Arab team had defeated the mightiest teams in Europe so they brought out the hatred buried within them. What kind of human are you when you liken a player and his mother to monkeys? Are you a human or an animal from the inside? In the end, and under harsh criticism of the channel, the Danish channel TV2 apologized for what happened and said in a statement. We deeply apologize that a host on TV2 News made a comment that is both wrong and offensive. Although it wasn't the intention of the host, this was a clear mistake. We apologize for it and we will take it into account in our work at TV2 News.